Hey YouTube, you know, subscribers or people in PB Nation watching this video. This is No Pop Allowed or uh, The Ultimate Hero on PB Nation. And uh, this is a small video I'm going to do about this matrix right here. Um, a very common board for these matrices to have in them is the Tadao board with the uh, M3 chip. So what we're going to do today is go through some of the modes and things inside this gun and uh, and I'll show you how the board sort of works and how it's done. And I just wanted a little bit of a disclaimer at the beginning of this video. Um, I believe this video has been done before. I'm just really freaking bored and thought I'd go for it anyway. Decided I'd kind of show my subscribers or anybody that's interested uh, sort of how this board works and uh, and how to change settings and things like that if they ever had to. Um, so yeah, the, I know the video's been done and that's okay. I uh, just thought I'd kind of redo it, do it in my own style and uh, hopefully it'll be a pretty good video. So just turning on the gun, there's a single button on the back. You'll see there's a blinking blue light. That means eyes on. If you, of course, cover the eyes, you'll see a solid blue light. This means that there is obviously something in the breech. Um, pressing the button again, you'll go into a red blinking light. This is, of course, eyes off. So you'll be able to freely shoot the gun. Of course, it sort of shows a yellow light when you uh, activate the solenoid there. So, turning off the marker here. If you have the trigger pressed, press the button on the back, you'll go into the programming mode. So, in this programming mode, obviously, you'll be able to change all of the different settings and stuff your board can handle. So, um, we'll start with going through what all of these different modes are. Um, the green right here is debounce. The purple is dwell, the yellow is a loader delay, blue here is an anti-mechanical bounce, red is your ABS dwell for your first shot, um, white is the firing mode, and teal is the max rate of fire. So then we go back to green and you'll start over. So uh, now we're going to go into a little bit more detail on what the modes are and how you can change them. Okay, so the first up here, as we started before, green is, of course, debounce. So debounce is going to be um, bounce caused by the switch and the trigger being somehow manipulated to shoot faster than it is actually being pulled. Um, the best way to see if your gun is bouncing is to just pull the trigger with one finger, in this case you almost have no choice, but to pull your trigger with one finger and see if every time you pull the trigger it only shoots one shot. If it shoots two, you're going to have to up your, uh, your debounce a little bit. The debounce settings on this board go from 1 to, I think, 50, but uh, the stock setting, I believe, is 5. So leaving it on 5 is probably your best bet. If I hold the trigger down, you'll see it blinks 5 times. Okay, maybe more. <laughs> I don't know what I had it set at, but if you hold the trigger down, it'll show you what the setting is currently and then give you a chance to put in your own setting. As you saw, I didn't touch the trigger afterwards, so all it did was just leave it the way it was and go back into the programming mode. So as you can see, we're back in the programming. So after the debounce, you'll go into the purple here, which is dwell. So dwell is a pretty common thing on most markers, and hopefully you'll understand what you need to do with dwell. Um, in this case, the settings are from 10 to, I believe, 30 milliseconds. Um, I think the standard for this matrix is somewhere like 18 to 20, which is usually the standard for most matrices. Um, you'll see a lot lower dwells on guns that are poppet valve design. Um, but in this case, um, the stock settings are usually pretty good. If you find that you're getting lots of drop-off or things like that, inconsistency, you're going to want to up your dwell a little bit. Um, but if you want to get a little bit better air efficiency, you want to lower it down to as low as you can. The yellow is, of course, loader delay, as I said. That's actually the delay. Once the ball has been seen inside the breech, it'll delay a little bit longer to allow the ball to settle down into the bottom of the breech. Um, if you aren't using a force-feed loader or you're not using a very good loader, you're going to want to definitely have this up a little bit just because it'll make sure that the ball is settled into the breech before it's actually fired. Um, the settings, to be honest, I uh, don't know. But I think they're 1 to 50 again, and the stock setting is probably what it's at right now, which is 2. So there you go. It's um, it's probably going to be fine at stock settings. Okay, the blue here is anti-mechanical bounce. So again, this is another bounce um, deterrent kind of design. 
this bounce actually comes into play when the gun is kicking. So it's when the gun bounces off of your shoulder and hits the trigger again. Um, so this this is designed to make sure that it doesn't fire again accidentally like that and have a runaway marker, so to speak. Um, again, I believe the settings are up to... F okay, no, they're only up to 5 on the on this bounce and they are a stock setting of two so it'll be fine where it is probably so the red here is your anti-bolt stick dwell so it's your first shot dwell after the marker has sat for a little while so it'll add whatever this is set on top of whatever dwell you have originally um, I think mine is set to 20 dwell so with this going I'm adding 10 milliseconds onto that first shot. So it allows your marker to make sure that it's going to fire the full cycle of the bolt um, once the marker is sat for a little while. And the reason for that is because it's a spool valve design, so there's a lot more friction on the bolt when it's sat for a little while. Um, so the settings here, I think, are 1 to 15 or so, and you'll be able to add however much extra dwell you need to make your first shot work. And um, then we have fire modes. There's only three fire modes on this board itself. There's a uncapped semi, a capped semi, and a modified sort of PSP ramp. Um, the first semi, of course, it uh, ignores whatever your max rate of fire is set at, which is the next one here, um, and it just shoots completely uncapped semi. The second one is the, you know, capped semi-auto, so whatever you have your uh, cap at on the board, it will be uh, the cap on that setting. And then, of course, your third setting is the PSP ramp, which is again affected by your max rate of fire, which is set right here. As I said, it only affects the second semi and the PSP sort of modified ramping. Um, there is 1 to 25 as settings, and you're going to have to take a look at some sort of chart or the manual to be able to find out exactly what the different settings are. Um, you'll have tons of different settings within those 1 to 25, but you will only have the option of going up to a 20 BPS cap, which is approximately what the solenoid is capped at anyways, so that's okay. Um, and after that, of course, we go through the entire menu. I kind of showed you a little bit of how to change the settings. Um, we'll just go to teal here, which is, I don't know, wait, we want to go to white which is of course firing mode and I'll kind of show you the PSP here so if you hold down the button it'll show you which mode you're in of course right now I'm in the capped semi so if I press it three times I'll go into the third setting which is NXL sort of PSP ramp they call it a modified ramp and it is pretty much a PSP style ramp um, if we go into teal here we can change the ROF we'll just check what it is right now we're in one okay so I just set it into 25 which is the highest setting which is supposed to be a 20 BPS cap so now to save your settings or go into firing mode obviously just turn off the board turn it on again I'll turn the eyes off and as you can see here we're now into a ramping mode. So I forgot to mention one last thing about this board. Um, if you open up your grips here, you're going to find this black button right here, sort of right above the LED, this black button. This is actually your tournament lock button. Um, and so what you can do is if you are playing in a tournament, it was originally designed so that you could just press your tournament lock button and you wouldn't be able to change your settings without uh, pressing the button again. So if you just take a look, if you press the button once, it'll flash green and if it flashes green that means that your settings can be changed you just have to press the trigger and turn it on if you press it and it becomes red then that means the tournament lock is on and you won't be able to change your settings at all um, so you can see right now it just turned red if I press the trigger and turn it on it just flashes blue meaning that it didn't go into programming mode so if that happens then all you have to do is open up your grips and you'll just have to press the tournament lock button and you'll see it should just flash green like that and there you go you can change your settings